The intercontinental ballistic missile Atlas is a formidable weapon of war and a versatile research rocket of peace. Atlas the weapon is an automated sentinel, always primed, constantly ready to annihilate any enemy target anywhere on Earth. Atlas the research rocket is the workhorse of the infant space age, relied upon to thrust scientific vehicles beyond the atmosphere. Time has been the missile's harsh taskmaster, spurring its swift development, dictating its design, governing its launcher configuration. The relentless sweep of the second hand has overshadowed its every instant, for national security demanded that Atlas be rushed to battle readiness as fast as humanly possible. Convair Astronautics, San Diego, California. This is where Atlas was conceived and then developed under a challenging Air Force philosophy of concurrency, sometimes called the calculated risk. Because of the free world's pressing defense needs, Atlas and its support equipment were ordered into production even before it had proven itself in flight. The combined efforts of an Air Force industry team involving tens of thousands of the nation's citizens and the elite of its industries converged to produce the giant ICBM. The calculated risk paid off. Atlas, first of the long-range missiles, was designed and produced with unequaled urgency in a race against time. It became operational in just over four years, three less than normally required for new air weapons. In design concept, the missile is like a football. It has no internal braces, since they would burden it with needless weight and curtail the amount of kerosene-like fuel and liquid oxygen it could carry within its hull. Instead, it derives its strength and maintains its shape solely from a tough skin of specially developed stainless steel, as thin as a knife blade, stretched taut by internal pressure. Each of the three main engines weighs less than an automobile motor, but together they deliver more than 360,000 pounds of thrust, over three and a half million horsepower, more than the combined power of 25 jet fighter planes. For increased reliability, all engines, including two small verniers, which provide roll control, are ignited prior to launch. Two of the main engines are then jettisoned after several minutes of flight. This staging technique prevents the possibility of a second stage engine failing to start while flight is underway. External equipment pods house the flight control system. Electronic autopilot and guidance units perform the functions of pilot and navigator in bombers. They guide the weapon to its target. Two models of the combat atlas are in production, though only experienced missile men could readily distinguish between them. The earliest version, as the D series, is directed by radio inertial guidance. Ground stations track it, radioing guidance commands to its flight control system during the first portion of flight. E series, the latest model, contains more powerful, faster starting engines. But more importantly, it's flown by all inertial guidance, which operates independently of ground stations. It cannot be jammed by enemy defensive signals since it constantly calculates position and correct flight attitude by itself. Most atlases will never fly except in war. But the flight readiness of each missile is assured by an intensive test program conducted at every production step on every system and on the completed vehicle. The primary purpose for the existence of Atlas is as a weapon system, a weapon which can be serviced and launched by small, skilled crews of strategic air command missile men. 
At Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, a combined training and operational facility, fledgling missile men learn to master their powerful weapon, while qualified missile men sharpen combat efficiency with constant training. Supported by automated electronic equipment, they rapidly prepare for flight. In minutes, they check out Atlas systems, feed its target information, and pump enough propellants aboard to power a four-engine jet liner on nearly six transcontinental flights. All of this fuel will be consumed in less than five minutes. Their weapon towers eight stories high and weighs more than a quarter of a million pounds when ready for flight. In less time than it takes you to watch a favorite television show, it can deliver a hydrogen warhead with city-crushing accuracy more than 9,000 miles. first reached battle-ready status in September 1959, and it's the only operational base from which it will ever fly, except in war. It was at Vandenberg that the first combat launchers for Atlas, unprotected gantry-type complexes, were rapidly constructed. They permitted a small ICBM strike force to stand guard while stronger emplacements were built. The other operational bases 11 in all, with a total of 129 separate launchers, are strategically spotted in a missile battle network across the nation. Demands of time and concepts of concurrency dictated design of the launching emplacements as they did with the missile itself. Even before the first Atlas flew, the launchers were being designed. Objective was to have the emplacements ready nearly as soon as the first combat missiles were available. Defense needs for the closest possible thing to instant sheltered launchers resulted in lightly protected complexes called soft sites. Relatively easy to build, they housed the missile in a horizontal position under a concrete roof. One command center and related guidance facilities direct radio-controlled missiles at several launchers. New self-guided atlases eliminated the need for ground-based guidance stations thus permitting launcher dispersion and hardening. Each below-ground launcher is a self-contained nuclear-age fortress, isolated from other emplacements to prevent an attack from destroying our missile forces. Sheltered under protective tons of steel, concrete, and dirt is a complete Atlas combat station. Missile men service their weapon and the intricate systems of their posts without exposing themselves above ground. Strongest stations in the battle network are the silo emplacements, designed specifically for the all-inertial guidance atlas. Rugged, practically invulnerable to nuclear attacks, the silo safeguards the missile, launch and service equipment, propellants, and crews deep in the bowels of the earth behind thousands of tons of concrete. From it, Atlas can be raised to the surface and dispatched to any target on our globe in minutes. As an aid to hasten construction of silo emplacements, a full-scale three-dimensional mock-up of the launcher was built in three sections to be used as a design pattern. Using the model, engineers are able to fit, align, evaluate, and modify silo systems. When they mold a system to a usable configuration, it is then prefabricated for operational sites, resulting in a saving of precious time. Silos are the toughest to build, so they're the last to join the battle network. Six silo bases, each bristling with 12 nuclear-tipped missiles, will defend the nation from Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and New York. While missiles are mass-produced and their launchers rush to completion, intensive Atlas improvement programs are still underway. 
In Sycamore Canyon, near San Diego, missiles selected for research testing are harnessed in captive test stands and static fired repeatedly. Sensitive instruments record every millisecond of each test, revealing to engineers the instant-by-instant instant performance of the missile's system. Through continuing research and development, the ICBM is constantly refined, its performance and reliability improved. But flight from the nation's missile proving ground, Cape Canaveral, Florida, is the supreme test. Here, where Atlas first demonstrated its worthiness in June 1957, members of the contractor Air Force team who created the missile worked together to better it. Preparations for each research and development mission are painstakingly thorough, vastly complicated. Each Atlas is expensive and can be flown only once. So each must be forced to yield every possible bit of information concerning its flight. As the moment of launch nears, an army of civilian and military specialists ready themselves and their equipment for the test. The chosen missile enters the final hour of pre-launch checkout. Each of its systems is investigated electronically to assure that it's ready. Down the Atlantic Missile Range, at island stations such as Grand Turk and Antigua, tracking experts await the moment of flight. Their sensitive equipment scans the sky, ready to follow the missile as it races toward its target. At land's end, on the deserted reaches of the ocean, specially equipped telemetry ships wait on station to record flight data radio down from the streaking missile. And in the air, Air Force crews conduct last-minute patrols to assure that the way for Atlas is clear, that no ships or planes will be endangered by its passing. The range is ready. The 1,001 pre-launch preparations are completed. And now the army of specialists, who function with clockwork precision, wait as one for the missile. after launch, aiming its belly equipment pod in the direction of its target. Then it begins pitching over, a gradual tilting, until normal flight attitude is achieved. As it climbs, it sends back a constant stream of flight performance information for recording on miles of magnetic tape. This detailed history of temperatures, vibrations, fuel flow rates, pressures, positions and attitudes will be the basis for proving out new systems and modifying others. Atlas is now far beyond human sight, traveling nearly 16,000 miles per hour. It's seen only by powerful cameras watching a signal light indicate its path across the sky, and by tracking radar whose searching beams trace its passage. Now the nose cone separates from the missile. Moving three times faster than a bullet, it streaks alone along a ballistic trajectory to the target. And the spent Atlas, its purpose served, plunges back into the atmosphere to fiery destruction. But before its final plunge, it provided invaluable information needed to improve missiles of the future. While the weapon Atlas stands in silent vigilance at combat bases, the research atlas is shouldering ever-increasing workloads of civilian and military space projects. It earned its place in space programs in December 1958, when an entire missile was launched into orbit around Earth, carrying the now famous Christmas message from President Eisenhower. One of its most dramatic roles as a space vehicle booster is in Project Mercury. 
For the Mercury program, it will thrust manned capsules into orbits around the world. The orbital flights will lead eventually to permanent manned satellites in space. In another space project, Atlas is boosting a Gina series satellite into orbit. Each mission is named after the satellite carried aloft. The first was Midas, a warning system satellite which uses infrared sensors to detect enemy missile launches. The biggest load Atlas will power aloft in the years immediately ahead is Centaur, our first high-energy space vehicle. Burning liquid hydrogen for fuel, Centaur is capable of placing 9,000-pound satellites into Earth orbit and of sending large scientific probes into deep space. Current missions planned for the space rocket include flights to the Moon, Venus, and Mars. The intercontinental ballistic missile Atlas was born from the labors of many Americans and rushed to maturity at a grueling pace. It came of age in a time when its presence is vitally needed. Its awesome destructive potential guards our frontiers today. And it is capable of extending those frontiers to space tomorrow.